Hi, my name is Rob Jones and today I'm going to be guiding you through Innovation's brand new compact synth and audio workstation, the Zyre Synth. This device here is all you need for recording, synthesizing and MIDI controlling, whether performing or in the studio. In one mode it's a standalone synthesizer that can be used totally separately from the computer as it powers off batteries or an external power supply or will power over USB when connected to the computer. And in another mode it's a MIDI controller where all of its knobs, buttons and the expression pad and stick can be used to MIDI control software or any connected hardware. Furthermore, you can actually utilize the onboard synth whilst using it to MIDI control. And in both modes, it's also a two in, two out USB audio interface where you can use it to stream audio directly from um, a sequencer on the computer to any connected monitors or an amplifier or you can use it to record a microphone or line level signal plugged directly into the back here. At the moment, I've got two active KRK V6s plugged into the line level outputs on the back here. And I've also got a sustain pedal plugged into the sustain pedal input. So, uh, another great thing about the Xyacinth is that it's actually class compliant on both Mac and PC, so no drivers are required. So if I want to use this as my MIDI controller and audio interface uh, within Ableton Live here, all I have to do is connect the Xyacinth over USB, start up Ableton, and go to my preferences by going to the live menu and clicking preferences or clicking Apple comma, and then click the audio tab up here, and then select the Xyacinth as my interface um, for an output audio device and also for an input audio device. Uh, and now in the MIDI menu I have to make sure it's set up as a remote controller on the input. Um, and then it's also good to set up the um, output sync to be on here because this will mean that the Xyacinth's onboard synth will actually lock up to Ableton's beats as it synchronizes to the MIDI clock. Although the keyboard is class compliant, and so you can just plug and play, there are actually drivers available which will reduce the latency, so it is advisable to run the installer that comes on the resources disk. The Xyacinth functions in two modes, one for synthesizing and one for MIDI controlling, accessed by alternate presses of the play slash synth button here. When in uh, synthesizing mode, you'll notice the synth prog number and name on the screen here. You can use the encoder here to scroll through the onboard sounds. When in MIDI controlling mode, you'll notice the Zio template number and name there, now on the screen. I use these buttons here to step up and down through the onboard templates. Meanwhile, the encoder is now used for the same purpose as in synthesizing mode for program change data, only this time, rather than changing the sound of the Xyre synth synthesizer, this time you're changing the sound of the synth that's being MIDI controlled. For example, if I want to control my V station here in Ableton, I have to select the V station template put the track into MIDI record and now I can play play the V station using the keys change the V station sound and um, tweak the V station parameters using the controls here The remaining mode buttons here are for editing the Xyacinth MIDI templates or the general settings. Uh, in MIDI controlling mode, if I press edit, it puts the keyboard into a mode where the MIDI data assigned to any individual control, any of the knobs, any of the buttons, uh, the touchpad or the joystick uh, can be edited. For example, if I want to change the data assigned to knob 2 here, I press the edit button so that the LED is active, move that control which calls up that control for edit. Then I use these buttons here to step through the pages of available controls. 
for that one knob. So I go to um, the first page, which is control type, and I make sure it's not set to no control, which makes the control inactive. I set it to CC rather than NRPN or RPN. <coughs> I then move to the next page where I can set the control number and, uh, and so on. You should also know that whereas it seems that you only have 11 knobs and 11 buttons in each template, as well as of course the joystick and the touchpad, you actually have double that amount. Um, at the moment, with this LED here selected by this button here, the knobs and buttons relate to group A in the template. Switching it again, and they become group B. So you actually have 22 knobs and 22 buttons available in every MIDI template. In MIDI controlling mode, if I press the edit button a second time, then it puts the keyboard into a mode where I can change the settings that affect all controls within one template. Things such as the keyboard velocity curve, the keyboard MIDI channel, and port routing, uh, the touchpad settings, and then also the hybrid mode settings where you can utilize the onboard synthesizer whilst you're MIDI controlling. Uh, more on that later. The global button here activates the global mode, where the settings that affect uh, the whole keyboard across all templates can be set. Things like memory protect, which protect any of the keyboard settings from being overwritten, things like MIDI templates or synthesizer patches. Also various power settings like phantom power, and a screen where you can dump MIDI templates or synthesizer patches to your computer. You'll notice that in MIDI controlling mode, there's only one global menu, as repeated presses do nothing. However, if I go to synthesizer mode, and now I press the global button twice, once putting it into the normal global menu, a second press goes to the synthesizer global edit menu, where you can change the general synthesizer settings. Things like the synth MIDI channel, the MIDI channel that the synthesizer responds to, which defaults to 16 or the port routing, or transposing the synth. Um, pressing the global button again, we'll go back to the ordinary global menu, and pressing play, we'll just return to normal synthesizing mode. In any of these modes, the right button is used to save settings. So in MIDI controlling mode, if I want to save the template settings, on a template that I've created or edited, I press the right button, and this takes me to a screen where I can choose the onboard memory slot between 1 and 16 that I want to save the template on, using the encoder. I then press right again, which takes me to a screen where I can name the template, moving the cursor left or right with the buttons here, choosing between capital, lowercase, number, or punctuation, using the menu button here, and then changing the character using the encoder. And then either pressing right again to confirm and save the template, or any other button to cancel. For a template to be saved, memory protect has to be off in the global menu. To do this, press the global button, cycle to the memory protect screen, and set it to off. When in synth mode, the knobs, buttons, and also the pad and stick can be used to tweak the synth settings. Now, there are labels up here to show you what each control does, but with there only being 11 knobs and 11 buttons, there are also um, select buttons here for determining what each control does. This button here selects what the knobs do. With the top LED lit, the knobs control the top row of parameters here. So for my oscillator section, which is these four controls on the end here, with the top LED lit, these controls here control my, my fine tuning, my detune, and my oscillator level, like so. If the knobs don't appear to be doing very much, that might be because you've got the wrong oscillator selected. 
There are actually three oscillators on board the Xia synth, and the one that you're controlling with these controls is determined by this button here. I'll show you what I mean. If I turn down the level of oscillator 2 and then 3, now I only have oscillator 1 left. So if I was to select oscillator 2 and change the waveform, I wouldn't hear very much. Whereas if I now go to oscillator 1 and change the waveform, then I will. Now, if I want to change these two knobs here to the bottom parameters, semitone and LFO1, I just press the button here so that this LED is lit, and now I can change my course tuning. Like so. Now it's exactly the same for my filter section over here. With the top LED lit here, then the knobs here control the top parameters. Uh, with the top LED active here, I'm controlling my main frequency controls, my main filter controls, sorry, which are frequency, resonance, and modulation envelope depth, like so. If I now want to change these to the bottom parameters, I just press the button so that the bottom LED is active. And now these are controlling uh, my tracking, which is um, how much the resonance follows the pitch of the keyboard, and my filter overdrive, and my LFO depth. Uh, meanwhile, no matter what these controls are doing, these bottom two buttons will always be controlling my filter slope and my filter type, changing it between low pass, band pass, and high pass, as follows. An even easier way of tweaking the filters is using the touchpad. As all synth presets have the filter frequency across the x-axis and the resonance across the y, like so. As there are many other synth parameters available for tweaking, but uh, few controls here to do it, the remaining parameters are accessed by a series of menus. These are shown on the blue strip at the bottom here, and are activated by pressing the menu button, followed by the corresponding button above. So if I want to go to the filter menu where I can see the additional filter parameters, I press the menu button, and then press the button here, above filter, which takes me to the filter menu. I can then use the up and down buttons here to go through the various filter parameters. While I'm here, I can show you a brand new filter feature on the Xiasynth, which introduces a much meatier sound. It's the filter shape page here. It's most effective with a bandpass filter with high resonance. If I now increase this value, you can hear its dramatic effect. Nice. <laughs> I wanted to add that line in, I thought it would be funny. <laughs> to return to normal synthesizing mode, I just press the menu button. You'll notice that this button here is flashing. This is telling me that I've changed the onboard sound and can compare it to the original saved preset. I do that by pressing and holding this button, as follows. If I prefer the sound that I've changed it to, I can save this sound by pressing the right button. I press it once, and that takes me to a screen where I use the encoder to select one of the 200 onboard slots to save the sound in. Then I press right again to name it, using the same process you do for MIDI templates. Then press right again to confirm, or press any button to cancel. If I decide, actually I preferred the sound as it was, I can go to one of the other onboard sounds and then return back to this sound for it to be restored. This is where you can apply all these effects to the synth. You do this 
by selecting the effect you want using the buttons here and then changing the value using the knob here, making sure that the top LED is lit there. For example, if I want to add some distortion, I select distortion so that the corresponding LED there is lit and then I increase the distortion value using the knob as follows. The Xyosynth has a fantastic new patch programming feature for creating interesting rhythmic patterns with your sound without having to rely on the sequencer. It's called the X Gator and it's a 32 step sequencer. To turn it on, press the X Gator On button here, like so. And to change the X Gator settings, you have to go to the menu by pressing the menu button here followed by the button above X Gator and ARP. Now this button goes into both the X Gator menu and the arpeggiator menu on alternate presses. So if I press it once, I'm in the X Gator menu, press again, the arpeggiator menu, press again, and then back to the X Gator menu. Once in the X Gator menu, I can use these buttons here to cycle through the available pages. One page sets the pattern of the X Gator, and you set each step by moving left and right with the arrows here to move the cursor about and then changing the level of each step using the encoder here as follows. You'll notice that only the top line was playing there well, if I cycle up to the next page, it shows you the X Gator mode, which allows you to set what pattern plays. So whether it's the first 16 steps, as was repeating then, or the first 16, then the, the second 16 on the bottom row, or the first 16 twice and the bottom 16 twice, and so on, or even some interesting panning options. Just like the arpeggiator, the LFOs, the delays and so on, the X Gator will synchronize automatically to incoming MIDI clock. So in Ableton, as long as I have my MIDI output sync set to on, so that the Xyre synth will be receiving the MIDI clock, then the X Gator will sync to any beats that I'm playing. To change the timing, you have to go to the sync menu by making sure that this LED is lit and then pressing the button above sync here. Now in the sync menu, I cycle down to the X Gator tempo, and now I can change that using the encoder here, as follows. Now recording with the Xyre synth is easy. Once the keyboard's been set up as an audio interface within your sequencer, a microphone or line level signal, or both, um, can be plugged into the back of the keyboard and recorded directly. Now I've plugged a dynamic mic into the back here, but if I plugged a condenser mic in, then I'd have to activate the phantom power. This is done by going to the global menu and then scrolling to the phantom power screen and then setting this to 48 volts. Uh, now, there are lower values that you can select on that screen of um, 12 and 24 volts. Now, this is for if you're, um, if you're plugging in a condenser mic that will accept a lower phantom power and you're trying to conserve energy, so if you're running off batteries. But 48 volts is the standard. Now, to change my input settings, I have to change the function of these knobs to a third option, the parameters that you see displayed on the blue strip above. I do this by pressing and holding the menu button until the top LED lights. Now I can use this knob to increase the level of input 1. Now if I want I can use this knob here to, to pan that input and this knob here to blend between the input and the backing tracks coming from the sequencer 
so I can create a latency-free mix. All you have to do now is set one of the tracks in Ableton to record, um, set it to the relevant input, which is input one, and then turn this off, because otherwise you're getting a delayed signal like that. And now I'm ready to start recording. The Xyosynth has various hybrid modes, where you can utilize the onboard synth and MIDI controlling capabilities at the same time. This is set up in the second edit menu, where you can change the settings that affect all controls within one template. To set this up on a particular template, just cycle to the template, press the edit button twice, and then cycle to the page which reads synth by control. Now if this is set to off, set it to keyboard so you can play the synth with the keys, or keyboard and joystick so you can play the synth with the keys and the joystick, or the keyboard and touchpad, or all three. I'm going to set it to keyboard and joystick because I want to use my touchpad to control some effects within my MIDI template. Uh, to demonstrate this, I'll show you a template I've got for Ableton here. With the group A LED lit here, the knobs up here are controlling the levels of my tracks in Ableton. Meanwhile, the buttons down here are activating those tracks, as follows. Uh, meanwhile, if I switch this to group B, now these knobs are controlling um, my effects sends, uh, and the touchpad down here the whole time is controlling a beat slicer, like this. Now, as I'm in hybrid mode, I can use the Xyre synth here to control my Ableton session, whilst simultaneously playing over the top the onboard synth, like this. Like that. But there's actually something else I can do with this. I could actually record that MIDI loop that I was just playing directly into Ableton and then send that MIDI back without having to play anything, like this. <laughs> And the advantage to this is, I can now change the, uh, the, the onboard sound on the X station to try it out on some of the different patches, like this. Or I can go back to my original one. And then while I've got that loop running, all I have to do to record it is put one of the tracks into record, like so. Hit record, and then... And then simply go into this mode, drag what I just recorded into my grid, insert it there, simply edit it so that now starts on the beat, 
and is two bars long and is looping. Now, I can play that loop. And can now go and choose uh, another sound on my X station. And then build up sounds that way. So you can see just how um, versatile and productive a unit desire synth is. Well, I hope you've learned a lot from these tutorials and now have a good basis for going away and making music of your own. For any more information on the Xyosynth, consult the full user guide PDF on the resources disk. Or for any more information or advice, visit the Novation website and online answer base. Thanks for listening.